Hello, everybody. This is Joshua Hayes at BigWayTrading.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coming to you in part one of our stock market wrap-up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make part one pretty fast so we just go over the market so we get right into part two. Getting to the stocks, we have a long that we are adding to that's making us money now from our first position. So we're going to add to it. And we have one full cover, and that's going to be a complete cover for money. So we're going to make money in that. And we're now going to have 19 longs with 20 shorts. So... We've almost got as many longs as shorts now, and the list of longs continues to grow, and we'll go over that in video three. Video two, we'll go over the new long, like I said, or the adding long that, we've ad that we're going to add to, and that full cover, and then also the partial covers, and we have some partial sales. We'll go over all that. Right now, part one, let's just review the indexes really quickly over each of them. NASDAQ up 2.68% today. An amazing gain. I'm very, very happy with the gains. Not only that, look at where it closes. 1670, 44, very close to the highs. Actually, let me go all the way on the plus sign on these indexes so it's clearly visible. And as you can see up the March lows, the NASDAQ continues to rally on higher volume. That drop down, that fallback yesterday, pullback, was pretty bad because the New York Stock Exchange outperformed uh, NASDAQ by quite a bit. However, today, NASDAQ up 2.68%. The New York Stock Exchange only up 1.3%. Still, a very great day, as you can see, closing near the upper end of its range, breaking out to a new recent high of the past two months. And the S&P 500, its brother, New York Stock Exchange, I believe, did the exact same thing. Yes, another breakout to a new high in, in April closes in the upper end of its daily intraday range and just looks pretty strong. However, volume is lower than the average, still higher than the day before, so it's an accumulation day. Still up 1.55%. However, the NASDAQ, once again, on an up day, killing it, up 2.68%. Now, let's see how the S&P 600 did, as I have not looked at that yet. S&P 600 is up 3.03%. So, this is clearly the leader and has been off the bottom as this index is up 38% in terms of percentage-wise, while the NASDAQ has been the leader overall to the New York Stock Exchange, it is up 31%. The S&P 600 is a little bit more volatile of an index, as you'll see. 6.84 6 uh, range in between each little bar. NASDAQ had 5. Now let's go look at the S&P 400. S&P 400 up 2.72%, so that outdid the NASDAQ. As you can see, with the 2.68%, still very strong gain, the 2.72%, just proving how strong the market is on the short term, S&P 602. I'm not sure if volume was higher, so let me go look here. Let me go look at the IBD premium graphs. First of all, let's look at the IBD 100. That, that is refreshed. The IBD 100 is up. That looks about like a little bit right uh, under 2%. So right around 2%, the IBD 100 was up. That beats the New York Stock Exchange and beats S&P 500, but does not beat the NASDAQ or the S&P 600 with the 3 and the 2.68% return. Still, good to see it up 2%. Now let's look at the IBD 8585. Higher volume, too, on the IBD 100. IBD 8585 has slightly lower volume. However, it's up 4.27%, meaning that it was up over 1.8, 1.8 is uh, 3.6, 9.9. So it was up right around 2.3, 2.4%, which means that it kept up, basically. The 2.4% gain kept up with the NASDAQ. And I'll show you the NASDAQ, what it looks like on here. Where's the NASDAQ composite? Here's what the 2.68% gain looks like. Pretty strong. Got the strong relative strength line. And now we're going to go look at the S&P 600. Hopefully, volume's up, and it isn't yet. As you can see, volume's still down. It'll probably come in tomorrow. Volume yesterday was lower on the reversal. Today, though, on the 3% big move, see how big that move is. We don't know what volume is yet. And then let's look at the 2.7% move on the 400. Very, very strong. So they all look very, very, very good. Everything looks very great along that line. But the NASDAQ is clearly the leader, and we're going to have some charts to show you here in a little bit just to prove that. Now let's look at the... Let me look at the SOX index also, show you how the, the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index is also doing. Oh, it's S-O-X dot X. S-O-X dot dot X. Sorry, I was pressing the zero there for two of the four times. So it was up 3.36% today, even outdoing the S&P 600, as you can see. So congratulations to the SOX index, showing that the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index is also leading the market higher 
off the March lows. It's up 34%. The S&P 600 is up 38%. The NASDAQ is up 31%. Boom, boom, boom. 600, Philadelphia Sox, NASDAQ. That's some pretty awesome leaders in the indexes. I'm very happy with that, without a doubt. Let's see how much time we have. Five minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Oil. Oil stuck in that range that I told you, 50 to 35, 55, 35, probably more likely. Until it gets out of there on either direction, I think you just play the bounce off the 35, 40 area, sell at the 55, 50 area, whatever. I don't play that, but that's what I'm advising on that kind of on that play. Platinum, wow, pulling back actually today, 1.31% towards the 200-day moving average. Still in a very nice uptrend overall. Still, I have no problems with this. About the only thing that I wish that, let's see, let me go up close. Okay, great. It did not close at the low of the day back here. Okay, it, okay, good. I don't even know what I was looking at. But it did not close at the low of the day, and that's good. It still shows on an intraday basis, even when it has bad days. Somebody's still stepping in at the end of the day to buy a little bit off the support. I assume if platinum had a 1.3% loss, silver was worse. Absolutely. Down 4%. Failed to hold on to the 200-day moving average. So, we had the golden cross, but the golden cross had a flaw. The 200-day moving average was in a downtrend. That didn't make it the best golden cross. The best golden cross has come when the 200-day moving average is moving up, and then the 50 retakes it. So, right here, silver is either going to break down and continue to go and retest the lows back in October. And if it goes lower, seriously, guys. Start looking to add 20 to 25% annually to your IRA just in case. I hope nothing ever happens. But listen, if you're putting away $5,000 every year in your IRA, you're doing a fantastic job. And honestly, I don't see what's wrong with putting 1000 to 1500 of that. You know, in metals, I really don't. I think it's a safe thing to do nowadays with fiat currency, knowing that they can just print the crap out of it. But I know you can always find more metals in the ground, Josh. People say, tell me. However, I don't think you can find as many metals as often as you can print dollar bills like we have the past three months. We've more than doubled the supply of money that we've had on the market the past 250 years in the United States of America. So take that into consideration. So gold also is holding the 200-day moving average still down 1.46%. About the only great news on that is that look at how well support held. The relative strength line, though, if you look on the very bottom, the white line shows that things are going to probably get worse. That the support's probably not going to hold. However, as long as that gold can hold above the 865 area, things are going to be okay. But okay isn't great. So short term, it's not for gold. However, gold gets back to 700. Excellent. Gold gets down to 600, even better. But I don't think it'll happen. But however, if gold can even get lower, seriously, I'm looking at a 20, 25 year horizon timeline with 20% of my money. I like gold a lot. I like gold a lot more. I think it's going to go much higher. That's just my bottom line belief. However, I don't know the time frame of that. you got to remember, after September 11th, I told a gold supplier, you should load up on your gold because gold is going to go a lot higher. I didn't do anything, though. And in 2003, it paid off because the stocks made so much money for me that even 2004, 2005, 2006 would have done fine. However, 20% of my account would have just been chilling and just done nothing. To the 2008 top, I could have gotten a 238% gain in safe metal in about seven years or about six and a half years. So in six and a half years, I could have gotten a 238% return by doing nothing. Now, I told the gold dealer to load up on his gold supply. I found out later on he did not listen. But boy, oh boy, we reminisced. So, you know, I mean... That's, that's my thing about gold. So even though gold doesn't look great now, I actually get happy with the pullbacks. However, there's no need to talk about it every day. I just do for you guys. The United States dollar, stay in the uptrend. Like I said, it's a rising wedge. But you know what? I don't care. As long as you keep on rising, wedge all you want. You know, just keep going up. That's good. If it helps the stock market, I'm glad. If it makes people happy, I'm glad. Rising wedges just supposed to be bearish, that's all. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'll be back with part two with our new long, the cells, the covers, and then part three with all these very nice longs to look at that we need to probably maybe go long in the future. They'll probably get us long about 100 stocks. However, not all 100 will make it. Still, it's nice to know what we need to be looking for. Aloha.